So good morning. It's uh, Monday morning, and it's just me today. Um, sorry about that, but I'm uh, going to get this podcast out to you. Um, really had a good time yesterday with uh, the, our day of worship, and I pray that uh, the things that we talked about in relationships and how important they are and um, how we ought to identify the who those relationships are in our life and, and to remember that we're messy people um, and that each of us needs a little bit of grace. And then obviously the part where we talked about forgiveness um, was was kind of an important part of what we said. Um, just to, uh, as a reminder, there's, there's lots of things going on in our church um, that I want to keep you up about. Remember that Secret Church is this Friday night. Um, we're going to start that right at 6 o'clock. So if you're late, um, you're going to miss the first part of it, uh, but we need to get going at six because it's a six hour evolution. Um, so if you want dinner, I encourage you to come early. Uh, we have five or six spots left for that. So if you've not uh, made a reservation for that and want to come, um, drop me an email at bob at oasisyuma.com and I'll reserve a spot and a book for you um, as well. Uh, we got the men's golf tournament coming up on the, the I believe, uh, if I recall, it's the 2nd of May. Uh, which is a, a week from Saturday, and then we have the Mother's Day, um, which is going to be the 9th of May, uh, uh, coming up the week following. So lots of things that are going on in our church. Um, there are uh, something I, I, I meant to mention to you yesterday. There's two things that I meant to mention yesterday, but um, again, I was concentrating on, on the message that God had given me, and, and but I forgot two things I want to talk to you about. One is we're going to have a special um, called business meeting uh, coming up on uh, May 10th, if I recall, um, and that's going to be to elect a new vice moderator of our church. I'm shortly to be going on vacation, and as the moderator of our church, uh, we have to have somebody that's here and available to do the business of our church if necessary, and so we'll be electing one of our elders, Jack Houchin, um, to act as our uh, our moderator, our vice moderator, um, and that way, in my absence, he can carry on the business of the church. Um, Jack is a fine businessman in our community. Um, he's more than qualified to be our vice moderator. So, um, again, we'll do that after all three services. It should just take us a couple minutes after the end of each service on that day to do that. Um, so that's the one thing. And then there's another thing coming up on May 24th. Uh, it's camp season. Um, and this year, instead of doing a bunch of fundraisers, uh, which we've done in the past, we're going to do something a, a little bit different. Um, a little bit risky, um, but I want to take the risk. We're going to take up on May 24th a special offering, uh, which is going to be designated a, a camp offering. And that's going to, at this point, going to be split um, between the children's camp and youth camp. Um, and, but we're only going to do a one-day, a one-time offering, and that's going to be above what we normally give in our tithes and offerings. And so um, we don't want to people to say, well, I'm going to save up my offering and then give it to children's camp. Um, that would be uh, uh, not the way to do that. Um, we would want you to give it above your uh, your normal gift that you give to the church, but a special offering that where we can offset the cost of camp for everybody. One of the things that we did this year to reduce our budget was we are not offering any scholarships um, per se in our camps. And so scholarships are going to come uh, by our church responding and giving a one-time offering on May 24th. And I'll try to talk to you a little bit more about that on next Sunday. So that's coming up. You know, I was reading this morning, um, and after coming back from my conference um, in Southern California last week, um, uh, being pressed, and when I when I go to those conferences, I'm always pressed uh, about what other churches are doing and um, how we're succeeding as a church, and how sometimes the church is failing. And um, uh, a lot of what this conference was is that our churches have to change in order to be able to reach um, the culture in which we live in. Um, I've said that I'm a big proponent of that, by the way. Um, that we have to change, but um, and one of the things I was reading this morning, I'm just going to read it to you um, because it reflects uh, my heart, and I know the heart of many here um, that attend Oasis Church. It's it's a little bit lengthy, um, but it's no different than me talking. Uh, so I'm going to read to you a little bit this morning from the book called Jesus Is. It was one of the featured speakers um, that was at the conference that day. His name is Judah Smith, and he pastors in Seattle, Washington, of all places. Uh, my back in my area where I grew up. And uh, I want I, I just want to read a little bit um, to you, about a page and a half. It says, Understanding that the gospel is good news should help us all be a little bit more cheerful, a little nicer to hang out with. Preaching and evangelizing are nothing more than sharing good news with people. 
Some of us are passionate about telling people about Jesus, but we freak them out because we never learned how to smile. We dangle them over hell and then wonder why they don't want anything to do with our gospel. If you say to preach the gospel, but there is no great joy, I say there's a problem with your gospel. I don't want to be a person who cares more about whether a guy smokes or does drugs uh, than whether he feels loved. I don't want to be a pastor who preaches love and acceptance but avoids the teenage gang member who hangs outside the church. I don't want to belong to a church that treats a woman differently because she happens to walk into church in a dress that shows off a little too much skin. You know, cleavage doesn't really intimidate God. Smoke that religion, he says. Maybe that's the only nice dress she owns. Maybe everyone she knows dresses that way. Maybe she's desperate and she's thinking that if she doesn't find some authentic love and joy today, she might end it all. I'm not advocating sloppiness or sensuality in church, but I'm advocating a church that reflects real life. A church where real people with real problems can come and find hope and joy. I want people in my church to welcome everybody, the gay, the straight, the rich, the poor, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I want my church to be a place where people can come in from all kinds of backgrounds and issues and shortcomings and addictions and bondages, and we don't have to get them fixed up before they can sit in the front row. That's the gospel. It's the good news for everyone. It's not the good news just for the people who are already good, for those who are already self-controlled and disciplined enough to have all their ducks in a row. It's good news for the people who can't even find their ducks. They can't even see some of the, uh, they haven't seen some of their ducks in years. Their lives are a mess, but they can come and find Jesus and find instant acceptance. They belong long before they believe and long before they behave. Man, I don't belong here, one says. Sure you do. No, look like everyone's dressed up all nice. That's just how they feel comfortable. They won't care how you dress. They won't even notice. I need to go out for a smoke. No problem. I'll save your seat. Can my partner and I come to your church? Do we belong? Of course. Sit right up here with me. You're amongst friends. For some of us, there's a little voice inside of us asking, so when are you going to lead your friend to Jesus? He needs to get saved. Here's a tip. Now hear this. Jesus is really good at saving people. I'm not. So I'm going to let him do that, if you don't mind, and I'm going to just make sure that my friend knows that he belongs here. See, I echo um, that sentiment. I believe that very strongly, but do I practice that way? And it was interesting. I was talking with our youth pastor um, this morning, and I read that same passage to him, and he says um, to me, he says, well, that really sounds nice, um, but that's not really how it is. And and that's the whole part of what has to change in church. Um, what we just read, the acceptance of all people, um, the good news for everyone, um, has to be the good news for everyone. And we as people um, have to learn to accept people and not expect people to live up to our standards before we introduce them to the gospel. We need to let Jesus be the instrument of change in them. Um, I appreciate that this morning. Um, that speaks volumes to me, and, and, and that's always and has been my goal um, as a pastor, whether I've been able to practice it well at times in my life. Um, that is my passion, um, is to make the gospel of Jesus available and welcome for anybody, regardless of their race, their color, their practice, um, whether they believe the same things I believe or they don't, um, but allow Jesus to make a difference in their life. So that's what I got this week. Um, again, I hope that you'll think about that. As a matter of fact, if you want to email me or give me a comment, um, don't be afraid. Um, I would love to sit down and talk with you. Um, I know what some think that that means that we're going to water down or we're going to um, not teach the truth. No, we're going to teach the truth with love and grace. Um, and, and to remember uh, that just as we said yesterday, um, I don't want to be one of those judgmental, holier-than-thou people that are casting the rocks and stones um, without looking at my mess first. Um, so I think it kind of ties in um, perfectly to what we talked about yesterday. Hey, have a great week. I'll see you on Friday night. Secret Church starts at 6. It is going to be an awesome evening talking about Jesus, 
um, and us as believers in the current culture in which we live, a tough culture, a culture that doesn't necessarily match up um, with what the Bible talks about a lot. Um, but we're here. Um, we have no choice. Um, this is the world we live in, and how are we going to relate to people? Um, that's going to be a great question, and I believe that you're going to see that answered on Friday evening. We'll see you at 6, and if not, I'll see you on Sunday morning. Have a great week.